All right, here we are with the next 30 questions for today. Let's start immediately. Nice. And here I've got the first question open for today. You are driving in a tunnel and approach the end of a traffic jam. What do you do? Switch on the hazard warning lights, make a U-turn and leave the tunnel. At the end of the traffic jam, switch off the engine and leave the vehicle. Hmm. I think that is quite clear. We are just allowed to switch on the hazard warning lights. Making a U-turn doesn't make sense because you should never ever make a U-turn inside of a tunnel and switch off the engine and leave the vehicle. What happens if the traffic jam is over and you can go straight ahead? You're not inside of it anymore, so you should wait inside of it. All right, next question. What must you remember concerning the lighting equipment of your vehicle? It must be correctly installed. It must be clean. It must be in operating condition. Yes, all of these three sound quite good. It must be incorrectly installed. It must be clean and it has to be in operating condition. So all of three answers are correct. How is it possible to prevent oncoming traffic being dazzled by the passing beam? The headlight range can be adjusted depending on the load carried by the vehicle. Only permissible light bulbs might be used in each of the headlights. The headlight setting should be checked after every repair. All right let's go it let's do it the headlight range can be adjusted depending on the load carriage by the vehicle what does this mean imagine this is your vehicle it's driving into this direction and you have a heavy load what happens is that the front of the car is going up and the lights will dazzle all the people coming towards you that's why at the side of your um of where you can turn on the lights you have something to scroll and therefore you can dim the headlights a little bit put them down and uh, you should do this if you're heavy loaded so the first answer is correct only permissible light bulbs may be used yes as well and they should be checked after they have been repaired so all three answers are correct when must you wait at level crossing at a level crossing when the barrier are being lowered when a railway employee is waving a white red white flag when a flashing red light comes on uh, i think you know it already it is all of them so when the barrier is going down if a railway employee comes up with his flag and if the um yeah red lights start to blink so i have to give it a click as well here we go all three of them are correct nice okay i'm not alone anymore thank you to join us again arslan arslan all right um you're approaching a level crossing with half barriers and flashing lights the red light is flashing but the barrier is still open what do you do if no rail vehicle is inside, cross the level crossing. Wait in front of the St. Andrews cross. Proceed as long as the half barrier is open. Hmm. Okay. If no re rail vehicle is inside, cross the level crossing. Ah, that's not a good idea. So it's just the second option proceed as long as the half barrier no exactly it is just the second one and we are right a railway employee is waving a red lamp at a level crossing what does this mean you may cross the rails carefully the red lamp is is of no significance for you you must wait in front of the level crossing 
the railway employees waving with a red lamp at the level crossing. What does this mean? As well, this is, I think, quite obviously to make cross the rails carefully. No, because he's showing his light. Um, it has a significance. So the only thing exactly is number three. You must wait in front of the level crossing, which would be correct in that case. You are approaching a level crossing where the barriers are open. What do you do? Approach at moderate speed looking along the railway line. Wait in front of the level crossing if you would have to wait on it because of traffic congestion. Proceed at the same speed as road traffic always has precedence in such cases. See that the same speed as road traffic always has proceeded in such cases. That sounds weird. So the only correct question, actually there are more than one. Approach a moderate speed looking along the railway line. Exactly, you get to it and you have to check left, right, left, that there is no trap, no, no, yeah, no train coming. And wait in front of the level crossing if you would have to wait on it because of traffic congestion. It means if you would go on and you would stop in the middle of the tracks, um, that is quite dangerous. So you always have to stop in front of it until you're sure you can pass it totally. So the only two answers, the only the first two answers are correct. All right. At the entrance to an industrial estate, there is a St. Andrew's cross, cross with a supplementary sign, industrial estate, rail vehicles have precedence, precedence. What must you remember? Rail vehicles have precedence, precedence, oh, I don't know how to spell it. Rail vehicles have precedence at all level crossings. Motor vehicles have precedence at level crossings without St. Andrew's Cross. Approach level crossings at moderate speed only. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. At entrance, you know, da, 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 what do you say? First and last. Okay, I have to read it again because I just read it without understanding it, honestly. Uh, rail vehicles have precedence. Mm-hmm. Rail vehicles have precedence at yes. No. Yeah, it's the last and it's the first and the last one. Exactly. Nice. You were right. Okay. You are driving along a forest track and approach a level crossing without St. Andrew's Cross. What do you do? Proceed without taking any special precautions since rail vehicles are required to wait here. Proceed at moderate speed and check to see if rail vehicle is approaching. To see if a rail vehicle is approaching. Listen out in case a rail vehicle signals its approach by whistling or ringing a bell. So I think that is quite clear too. It doesn't matter if it's at a forest or something like that. We have to proceed at moderate speed. And yes, you might listen if you hear any noises. So two and three exactly Arsalan, are correct. Nice. You are driving along a forest. Oh, this is what I was saying. Yeah, damn. What do you do at a level crossing when the barriers are closed? Wait before the St. Andrew's Cross without obstructing junctions. If possible, switch on the side lights when it's dark. Use the road area and wait directly in front of the barrier. Okay. So in that case, wait before the St. Andrew's Cross without obstructing junctions is correct. Yeah, if there is in front of it a small street from the right. You should leave it open that these guys might have uh, the possibility to join and wait in front of it. The second, if possible, switch on the side lights when it's dark is possible is as well. 
um, what you should do because um, the normal lights uh, will waste a lot of your battery and that's why you should you can switch on the side lights and therefore save your battery in case you have to wait a long time in front of the railway crossing and use the road area and wait directly in front no you should wait at the St. Andrews cross so it's just the first two answers nice when you are allowed to cross a level crossing with flashing lights but no barriers after a train has passed okay as soon as the oncoming traffic sets off even if the flashing red light is still on when the flashing light goes out immediately after the train has passed even if the flashing red light is still on okay three options but in that case it is just one answer correct and that is when the flashing red light goes out exactly the second one um why not the other ones uh, yeah, because if the red um, light is still blinking, it might be in some train pass, there might be that another train is passing from the other direction. So you should still wait here. Yeah? That's why you have to wait until the red light is out. And please don't do other things. You are approaching a level crossing with barriers. Where must you wait if you would have to stop on the rails in case of traffic congestion? Okay, we are following situation. There's a traffic jam in front of us. In between is a road, yes, a train crossing or some train rails. And the question is now, where do we have to stop? Just before the rails, level with the barrier in front of the St. Andrews cross. Well, you probably know it. It is before the rails, no level with the barrier in front of the St. Andrews cross I would say so just the last one let's have a look yes exactly all right so it's the third one nice the barrier of a level crossing inside a build-up area is closed where must you wait in front of the St. Andrews cross before the last bacon bacon isn't that something to eat before the first bacon well i i have seen it before in german so i remember in that case they are talking about the small signs white with some red stripes on it telling us how much meters we have to go on until we meet the uh, level crossing so let's read it again the barrier of a level crossing inside a build-up area is closed where must you wait in front of the st andrews crossing yes it's always the same before the last bacon before the first bacon no it's in front of this special sign nice there we have it or it's a special one yeah we have here even um this arrow in it or ray what does this traffic sign mean? You must always wait when a rail vehicle is approaching. Indication of existing overhead electrical wires. Rail traffic always has priority. So that is quite easy too. You must always wait when a rail vehicle is approaching. That's correct. Indication of existing overhead electric wires that's why we have this thing here in the middle yeah it's telling us you have to be careful if you have a heavy load that it's not um, not too high in case you scratch the the wires ahead of you uh, you might have a serious accident um, with electricity exactly so rail traffic always has priority it's possible too yeah, the sign means that you have to wait in case that there is a rail, um, rail away, oh, a rail traffic or a vehicle. So you must all win a rail vehicle is approaching. Yes, yes, all three. Correct. 
a light signal with no level crossing sign is positioned before a level crossing and in front of a junction with a road to the right. The red light is illuminated. Where must you wait? At the stop line. In front of the light signal, if there is no stop line, I can drive up to the level crossing after watching out for other traffic. Hmm. So you can imagine following your driving to it in front is a level crossing on your side before it is a street from the right and sometimes you have some stop lines in front of that um, little road from the right and sometimes there isn't. However, in that case um, you should stop if there is a stop line at the stop line because then you can leave a slot open for people from the right to merge in and wait in front of this level crossing or in front of the light signal if there is no stop line as well so first and second and you can drive up to the level crossing after watching out for other no because then you're actually you're blocking it so it's the first and the second one nice what must you do in this situation all right let's have a look we are driving 30 right now and we have this worker with his white red white flag and you probably know what it means you have to take care for trains even if the barriers are opened and there is no flashing light in that case we have to listen to this driver so let's uh to this worker what must you do in this situation i have to stop in front of the level crossing i have to Drive on pass to the left of the flagman or I have to drive on pass to the right of the flagman. So actually I said it before when we watched the, um, the photo. I have to stop in front of the level crossing. Exactly because this guy is actually telling us, hey, there comes a train so we shouldn't pass him. Yeah, we should wait. Exactly, Misa, you're right as well nice that you're here all right let's go ahead who is required to stop at a level crossing with a red flashing light in the form of an arrow point to the right traffic turning left traffic turning right and traffic moving straight ahead so the question is who is required to stop maybe we can explain it a little bit like that imagine you have a road going straight ahead and next to the road is um, are some railway tracks and suddenly of our road there is the option to turn right as well so you're allowed to go straight ahead or turn right to cross the railway crossing or the level crossing so in that case you sometimes have some lights with an arrow in it and that means in that case that um traffic turning right mm, exactly it's just the second one so that um who's about to stop just at the direction where where the this arrow is pointing out inside of your flashing light so in that case you could go straight ahead but you're not allowed to cross the railway tracks all right nice what does this traffic sign combination indicate? Okay, let's have a look. Keep in mind when it is normally the first impression is you look on top, but actually you should read always signs from um, from down up. So um, 10 kilometers per hour maximum speed and be careful for uh, level crossings. Yeah, there might come a train. So let's see. What does this traffic sign combination indicate? A rail crossing which I may approach at a maximum speed of 10 km per hour. A rail crossing which I may cross at a maximum speed of 10 km per hour. Or a rail crossing over which rail traffic may pass at a maximum speed of 10 km per hour. 
So, what do you think? Mm, I can help you that much that one of these two is wrong. So, two of them are correct. One and two? Yes, exactly. You're both correct. Nice. Uh, rail crossing which I may approach at the maximum speed and which I can cross. And the other one doesn't make sense because the train can drive much faster. So keep in mind, this speed always belongs to us and not to the train. So the first two answers are correct. Very good. All right. Uh, see you too. Thanks for having you here, Zurai. All right, let's start the movie right now. Okay, we have a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Right now we are getting a bit slower, down to 40, and we have some level crossings ahead of us. Uh, check more ahead of this railway crossing. Have you seen it? I will go to the question. But I can open in a second the picture again. What is the right cause of action now? I wait in front of the level crossing. I carefully cross the tracks. I wait at the tracks. So let's have a look. Uh, the good thing is we can't reopen the, the video, but we can have a look on the last picture of it. So um, we are close to this level crossing and there is a truck door quite in front and he was stopping if you have seen it in the video. So right now if we would proceed we would stop in the middle of the railway tracks. So that would be quite dangerous. So we have to wait in front. All right. So what is the right course of action now? I wait in front of the level crossing. I carefully cross the tracks. I wait at the tracks. So there is just one answer, correct? After what I said, after the after we have opened the picture, it should be clear. I wait in front of the level crossing. I carefully cross the tracks. <laughs> I carefully cross the tracks. No, you can't because you would stay in the middle of it. And that would be maybe your last journey if the train comes. And I wait at the tracks. No, you have to wait in front that you might see if the traffic light turns red. That you can still see it and that you don't go ahead. So it's just the first one. Nice. You are approaching a rail crossing. The barrier begins to lower. What should you do? I continue driving if there is no train in sight. I switch on my hazard lights. I wait in front of the level crossing. <laughs> you are approaching a rail crossing. The barrier begins to lower. What should you do? Hmm. I continue to drive if there is no train in sight. I switch on my hazard lights. I wait in front of the level crossing. Exactly. It is just free. Because switching on hazard lights doesn't make sense. And continue driving if there is no, you should wait. Yeah. If the barriers are going down, you should wait. All right, so the last answer. Where do you have to anticipate encountering rail crossings with no technical safeguards? Where do you have to anticipate encountering rail with no technical safeguards? Okay, on dirt tracks and forest tracks. On less frequently used roads or in industrial zones and port areas. Uh, where have you been? What do you think? Where have you been? Where have you seen them already? On dirt tracks and forest tracks. Yes, that is true. But on less frequently used roads as well and industrial zones and port areas too. So it's one, two and three, all three of them. Here we go, nice. All right, what do you do when a bus stopped at a bus stop with hazards, hazard warning lights switched on? 
drive past the walking speed only and if necessary stop drive past at a sufficient distance in order to exclude endangering pedestrians wait if passengers could be inconvenienced okay i think this remember when you have a bus and he has hazards warning lights on it means we are allowed to pass him but just with walking speed and then we have to be very very careful for pedestrians crossing the road to catch the bus so drive past at walking speed only and if necessary stop is correct yes one two three you say mm. Drive past at sufficient distance in order to exclude and yes, makes sense. And wait if passengers could be inconvenienced. Yes, of course. Yeah, if someone's walking, we have to stop for him. So you're correct. All three. Nice. Which vehicles must you allow to set off from marked bus stops? So there's a parking slot marked for um, for special cars. And we are driving past by and if there is a vehicle which of them we have to let go first regular buses school buses or taxis what do you think one two and three or three just one of them hmm. well regular buses we have to let go school buses as well and taxis no they don't have special rights in that case the only special right is that they can park on taxi um, places and that they are allowed to stop in the second row in case that there are a lot of cars parked and they want to um, let a passenger inside or leave them these are the only two special rights taxis have and you don't have to allow them to set off from a marked bus stop. So it's just one and two. Uh -huh. Exactly. A regular bus in the oncoming traffic has stopped at a bus stop on the same roadway with hazard warning lights switched on. What do you do? Slow down to walking speed. Only proceed at walking speed if passengers want to cross the roadway. Proceed at the same speed since the bus has stopped on the other side of the roadway. Uh, I hope you have listened carefully because there's a... You don't, you make easy a mistake. So one of them is wrong. I slow down to walking speed. Yes, because there's a rule if a bus is stopped with hazard warning lights on, we have to drive walking speed. So one is definitely correct. Only proceed at walking speed if passengers want to cross the roadway. Hmm. And what happens if passengers don't want to cross the roadway? According to that answer, you might drive faster. So this is not a correct answer because you have to always drive with walking speed if he has imagined or yeah hazard warning lights on. So the second is not correct. But proceed at the same speed since the bus has stopped on the other side of the roadway. No. It should be just the first one, actually. Okay, let's have a look. Nice. Okay. Proceed at the same speed since the bus has stopped on the other side. No, it doesn't matter if he stopped on your side or on the coming traffic. Um, the risk that someone runs over your street um, is given in both options and that's why you have to drive walking speed in case they have activated the hazard warning lights on both sides so it's just the first one all right you are approaching a regular bus with which has stopped in the opposite direction at a bus stop on your roadway and its hazard warning lights are switched on what must you expect all right so what do we have to think of? Passengers leaving the bus will suddenly cross the roadway. Passengers will cross the roadway only after the hazard warning lights of the bus are switched off. 
passengers will cross the roadway in order to catch the bus. Huh. So, what do you think? One, two, or three? All of them? Or just two of them? Okay, what must we have to expect? Passengers leaving the bus will suddenly cross the roadway? Definitely. Passengers will cross the roadway only after the hazard warning lights? No, that doesn't make sense. They can always cross, even if he doesn't turn off the hazard lights. Or um, if they're activated, you always have to count with people running towards or from the bus. So, oh, we shouldn't click it, I'm sorry. Passengers will cross the roadway in order to catch the bus. Yes, so it's one and three. You're right, Arsala. Nice. Okay. You would like to drive past a local transport bus, which has come to stop at a bus stop. What must you be aware of? I have to drive past carefully. I have to watch out for oncoming traffic. I have to drive past maintaining sufficient space to the side. Okay, what are you saying? I would say all three of them because I have to drive past carefully, yes. I have to watch out for oncoming traffic. See the, you drive past a local trans which has come to a stop at a bus stop. Imagine like that, there is the bus and he's stopping. Oh wait, that's the bus on your side. That's the bus, he's stopping and you drive maybe a curve around it. And um, if there's coming traffic, you might, um, yeah, you might not be able to overtake him. So watch out for oncoming traffic is important and drive past maintaining sufficient space to the side is important too. So all three of them, exactly. All right, you are approaching a local transport bus, which has come to a stop at a bus stop. What must you watch out for when driving past it? For pedestrians on the road, that there is sufficient space to the side, my speed. So let's think about it. All right, for pedestrians on the road, yes, that there is sufficient space on the side as well. And you have to watch out for your speed. Yes, you shouldn't be that fast. There is no hazard warning light, so you don't probably don't have to drive on walking speed, but you have to drive in a manner that you're still able to stop in case someone is running through. So all three of them. Nice. All right. OK, I think we finished all these bus questions right now. Let's go on. A vehicle have been waiting at the junction for a few seconds. What should you do in this situation? All right. In this case, I won't analyze it that much to give you the chance to answer correct. And I will explain it later. Okay. We are stopping. We have a green car on the right, a blue car in front and a red car at the left. Check which signs, which rules, which traffic lights might regulate, regulate that crossing. So that is the key to answer the question. All vehicles have been waiting at the junction for a few seconds. What should you do in this situation? I use clear hand signals to forego my right of way. I am the first to drive to the center of the junction where I stop. I am the first to pass through the junction. So what do you think? One, two or three? I always hate if that situation happens with my students in exam because it is very, very complicated and happily it's not that common, but it's not that easy. You use clear hands signal to forego my right of way, you say, Arslan. So I give it a click. That's correct. Nice. And that's the only one which is correct. I am the first to drive to the center of the junction where I stop. No, 
I'm at the first to pass through the junction neither. So let's solve it. You see, that's correct. And why? Because there is no sign, so the rule right before left applies, and we are waiting for the green car. The green car is from the, his right hand side, waiting for the blue car, and the blue car waits for the red car. And if you check from the right hand side of the red car, we are waiting. So the whole junction is blocked. So in that case, right for left doesn't help and everyone is waiting and waiting and waiting and it doesn't go on. So the most cleverest uh, waits until, uh, waits and sees, okay, I will give the guy who's waiting for me, in that case, the car on the red, give him a hand sign that he can pass and then everyone can go and we would be the last one who can pass. So that's why I use clear hand signals to forego my right of way would be the only solution or someone else has done it before you and then you can pass by. All right, let's go ahead with the movie. We are on a priority road. We're driving 50 and ahead is a tram, a red car, and the tram is getting closer because it is braking. Uh -huh. All right, let's go to the question. What is the right cause of action in this situation? I remain behind the tram. I drive past the tram on the right side. I overtake the tram on the left. All right, maybe you have remembered of one of the videos before we have done before. If you have a tram, you're just allowed to overtake it on the right hand side. But is this the right cause of action right now? Think about it. What is happening here, right? You see, there the tram is stopping and people want to enter the tram because there is a stop sign for the tram. And it is quite often that in bigger cities, the tram station is in the middle of the road and people will cross the road. Normally, you have a red traffic light. But in this case, there is no traffic light, so you have to you have to stop. If you go on, you will probably kill some um, entering passengers or leaving passengers from the tram. So I remain behind the tram is the only correct answer because you don't drive around them and you don't overtake it. Exactly. The only the first one. Nice. Okay. What is the correct cause of action in this situation? Hazards lights are off the bus. Yeah, we have to concentrate on the bus. We are driving 30. And yeah, let's have a look. What is the correct cause of action in this situation? Hazard lights are off. I slow down to walking speed now. I maintain my speed. I drive with an increased level of alertness. So keep in mind, you just have to drive walking speed in case there are hazard lights activated, but they have noted that they are off. So the first answer is not correct. I maintain my speed. Yes, that is okay. You can drive there with 30 because that looks quite safe. And I drive with an increased level of alertness. Yes, exactly, because there might someone passing by. And in that case, you have to slow down and even stop. So exactly, it is the second and the third answer. Nice. And let's go on with the last question for today. And that's a mean one. Ah, okay. What is the maximum distance a load may project backwards beyond the rear reflectors without a projection marker being necessary? So... If you have some load looking more backwards out of your um, or from your car, when do we have to mark it? What is the allowed distance without having any signs on it? You're coming back from Ikea with a new couch or something like that. Yeah, One meter. Oh, damn, you're an expert. Nice. Exactly. That's correct. Let's solve it. It is exactly one meter. In case you don't have, you didn't knew it, this is uh, a number you have to remember. Yeah, there is no way 
you have to memorize it. It is one meter. All right. Then that was really fun. Thank you that so much people actually were joining this time. Thanks to you, Arslan, as well. And uh, yeah, we have finished for today. And if you liked it, we see us tomorrow again at 8.30, if you like. Yeah. So thank you really, really much. And see you till next time. I hope you could learn a lot.